Hi folks, welcome back to another video. Well, as you can see, it's pretty green around here. We've had the best monsoon season, I've been told, we've had in a long while. July was super wet, so everything is super green. There's flowers all over my property. So I just walked around my property for, oh, 20 minutes and filmed a few things for you in case you might like to see these gorgeous wildflowers. Well, today is a really, really cool day for me. The reason being is I get to talk about my absolute favorite project here on the property. This here is my waterfall wildlife pond. And uh, I actually started the project last year, I think around August or September, kind of lost track of the time. And I've just worked away at it ever since. There's been definitely some hurdles to overcome to make this work properly, but I wanted to take you along on the journey and especially share with you just how much fun this pond is. So at the end of this series, I'll give a quick how-to just in case some of you might want to try building one of these yourself. Thanks so much for watching. folks so the plan for the day is to build a pond a decorative pond with a waterfall that falls down into the pond so the location I'm gonna put it right under that mesquite over there um, not sure if you can see it well and um, so what I'll do is stack the rocks around some cinder blocks and then the plan is to then um, build everything together with cement. So I got all these rocks, fortunately, for free, and uh, I just needed to haul them. So I hauled them all by hand. So uh, senior power here, uh, lugged them all, took me two days, and uh, a good supply. I really like the quality and texture of them, so I'm hoping they'll work really well. So we got our stack of cinder blocks over there, and that'll be used as the base to stack the rocks around. And I'm starting out with one big long piece of pipe that I'm going to use to, again, house that soft tubing that runs from the pump up to the top of the falls. And so this will be really great and it'll take a lot of abuse and I can cut it to the lengths that I need. So here's the, uh, this, the falls section. And what I did here is I stacked up cinder blocks. There's um, a stack of three tier high there and two tier high here and we've got these paver stones glued in place with the construction glue so uh, the rocks I just gathered locally uh, from a, a free source and these are all cemented in place and that of course the beauty of that is it hides the cinder blocks really nicely now of course you're going to go well I can see cinder blocks but what's going to happen here is is I'll put the pond liner over these after I've shaped concave areas in cement, kind of like the shape of a dishpan, so that the uh, 
pond liner can sit nicely in there. And then I can lay small, flat rocks uh, any angle I want to create a rapids in this section. And then everything falling down one more tier, which I don't have here in place yet, of cinder blocks. And then finally down into the pond itself, which I haven't dug. The pond will be about five foot in diameter, and I'm going to make it about three feet deep. The reason I want a good deep pond is here in Arizona the sun is so harsh that evaporation happens quickly and I know by experience from building one of these before that the water tumbling down with a little bit of wind gets sprayed all over the place so you're going to lose a lot of water. So I need a big reservoir. The great thing about this gray PVC pipe, all I have to do is dry fit it and not glue it. The reason being is it's just a housing to protect that soft pliable hose that connects the water pump uh, to the flexible piping that goes to the top of the falls. So you can see an essential tool here for cutting the pipe is a hacksaw. So naturally, before I cement all of that plumbing in, I want to make sure that this little solar pump works properly. So we'll give it a trial run. I'll just fill up this dish pan with some water and hopefully um, that this will be able to do its thing. So we'll just take some water and cover the pump because we don't want to run her dry. do it. So this little pump kit comes with a solar panel with a little stake that you can put in the ground and it's used to prop the panel up in the right angle for the sun. So that's in place. So now we're going to hook it up. So one of the really important things about this product is the connectors. But let's take a look here. If you look with this unit, hopefully you can see that, it's really, really specific about how those two pieces go in together. It's a very simple, beautifully simple mechanism to attach this solar panel to the pump, but you, there's a little square flat end on the bottom of this that has to be lined up when you push them together properly. So we're just going to put these two things together. There's no other attachments to do. It's a little tight. <laughs> okay. They're connected, hopefully. And Houston, we have launch. Uh, I would say it's a little bit too wet, so uh, we're just going to add not a lot, but a little more of the mix to this. And that comes from someone who's, this is I think only the second, the third batch of cement I've ever mixed in my life. So take it uh, with a grain of salt, but I'm going to add a little more, a uh, little more mix. Kind of reminds me of making a uh, pie dough. Add a little more flour, and hopefully that'll help. I think it's almost there, but I'm going to add just a little bit more. I 
I don't know whether there's such a thing as over mixing, like you can over mix uh, pie dough so that it becomes kind of tough. So I hope I'm not over mixing. I hope no actual, actual stonemason ever watches this. I mean, <laughs> they would gather their buddies around and have a beer and just laugh their self silly, I'm sure. But it's really fun and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm hoping it turns out good. So what I'll do is take one large section of pond liner, that 10 by 13 foot piece, and I'll put that in the main pond. So obviously this is a lot of work by hand, but I don't know, digging is kind of therapeutic in a way as well. Um, I think for us seniors, as uh, long as we keep fit, then uh, we can uh, certainly enjoy a better quality of life. Maybe digging helps. Good morning, folks. This is uh, another day of working on the waterfall pond that's going to be designed as a pond to track wildlife. Uh, currently, where we're at with this is we have finally the hole all dug and we have all the rocks hopefully we'll need for the rock work. And because I found that it ended up being a pit trap for creatures like there was a, a small mouse who had a, went to battle with a tarantula, uh, and I, I'll spare people the footage of that. Anyway, they went to battle in the bottom, and it seemed like the mouse came out 
for all the worse in that one. And so I had to pull those guys out of there. Most wasn't in good shape. Tarantula was fine, and I released him. Uh, so I decided to better cover it. So I covered it with the pond liner. So you'll see that black pond liner there. And then today, our goal is to line the hole with some soft material so that the pond liner won't get punctured. That's very important. So um, I'm going to pull the plastic liner off, and you can see already that I've put uh, soft material there. And one note of caution before I uh, remove the pond liner is I do have reptiles on my property. I've seen so far three rattlesnakes, one Mojave Green and two Western Diamondbacks. So I'll be removing the plastic very gingerly and uh, so that I'll be safe. So in this case, I've taken an old comforter and a yard sale locally here um, offered the two blankets that you see. Um, their uh, cost, total cost was $2. So this should protect the pond liner really well. And since my ground here is super dry, I'm not anticipating a problem with rotting and, and uh, decaying uh, in the years to come. So the next step for this project is to uh, start a base for the rocks that are going to grow around the rim of the pond. So what I will do is I'll put down a layer of concrete or uh, quick, uh, quickcrete and then lay a, a layer of rocks down on top of that. I'm going to have to build it up in some places because the rim of that pond is not level. And obviously the way the water will work is any slight downhill, the water will find that and cause uh, spillage over the edge, which is definitely not desirable.
got the trowel. Now getting back out could be a bit tricky without disturbing the stones. So not very graceful, but it worked. So in the upcoming video, folks, I'll finish up the pond section and then move on to the rapids, creating them and making them work, plus a lot more detail. So you might want to stay tuned just to see how all that unfolds. And I really appreciate you coming by and watching. Oh, and for those who've asked about Rody, thanks for asking about him. Um, I saw him this morning, just actually about an hour ago, uh, drinking at the pond. And uh, he came and left really quickly and he's all by himself. So wish him luck. Sooner or later, he'll find a spouse. Um, matter of time, I figure. This is also an excellent time to say a big thank you to Kevin who sent $50 to my PayPal account. Thank you very, very much, Kevin. Definitely appreciate it. So I also took note that most folks are not subscribers. So if you like these videos and find them helpful in some way, by all means, hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell. That will tell you when my next video is coming up. Thanks as always, folks. And uh, I'm really looking forward to your comments and questions. And we'll see you on the next video.